Ruchem Aboyim, thank you very much for coming. Uh, we have been on a uh, lecture series of the Shema Yisrael. We did the first line of the Shema, and then the first paragraph, Yahafta, second paragraph, Ahoya. And today what I'd like to do is deal with the third paragraph of the Shema, which mentions the mitzvah of tzitzit, the fringes. It's found in the book of Bamidbar, in the portion of Shalach, chapter 15, verses 37 through 41. Now, the portion of the mitzvah of tzitzit follows a section of the Shabbos violation. The Mekoshes hates him, the one who gathered the wood uh, in the desert uh, that was uh, put to death by the nation. First person to uh, desecrate the Shabbos. Now, the reason given is that God gave the Jewish nation a sign to remember the mitzvah of Shabbat and all the mitzvahs so as to avoid sin based on a Ramban. That's why the mitzvah of Tzitzis was given to us. The Rivash states that four signs surround a man daily. Mila, circumcision, is before him. The mezuzah is on his right, it's put on the right side of the door. Tefillin is put on the left, again on the left arm, and the tzitzit's on his garment from behind. When we say the Shema in the morning, we gather all four of the tzitzit in one hand. This act represents the gathering of all the exiles. The holiness of the four tzitzit stems from the four-letter name of God, of mercy, the yud ke vav -ke, which are derived from the four elements of the world, which are fire, air, water, and earth. The portion begins with the words, Biyom Rashem Moshe Lemor. And God spoke to Moshe, saying, Now the al Shmoni asked the question, Why the word Vayomer? And he said, Every other time the Torah uses the word, then when it begins with the words of speaking to Moshe, it's Vayadabir. And God spoke to Moshe. Why? By Yomer. So it says that when Moshe saw the Mekoshes Eitzim, the individual who was gathering the wood on the Shabbat, who was put to, put to death for his violation, Moshe said to God that during the week, the people have the mitzvah of tefillin to remind them of the commandments. How can they remember on the Shabbat when tefillin are not worn? So God answered Moshe and he said, I will give them the mitzvah of tzitzit, and that will help them to remember. And that is why the term vayomer is used, a statement that answers one's request. Continues with the words, Dabro b'nei Yisrael v'yamarto alehem, speak to the children of Israel and say to them. The Orachayim HaKadosh states that not only was God conveying a mitzvah, but also a distinction by means of this mitzvah. And it continues with the word, the asu lahem tzitzit, and they shall make for themselves fringes. Now, when we make a blessing on our talit, on the shawl, the prayer shawl that we wear, what we say is, lihis atef b'tzitzit, to wrap ourselves in the tzitzit. However, strange, because we are really wrapping ourselves in the garment, in the talit, not the tzitzit. So why do we say the tzitzit? When we say those words, alluding to wrapping ourselves in all the commandments of the Torah, the Archaim HaKadr says that from the Vav, the Asu, and they shall make, again, the Vav is always and, we learn that during the week, we wear tzitzit in addition to our tefillin, and on the Shabbat, instead of the tefillin. So we always have two witnesses. It's either tzitzit and Shabbat, or tzitzit and tefillin. But it's always the tzitzit. That's done all 365 days of the year. Now the word tzitzit has a gematria, a numerical value of 600. Um, on each corner we have eight strings and five knots. 600 plus eight plus five, 613. The number of commandments that we are commanded by God to observe. In addition, the tzitzit are dragged on the ground, a sign of humility. We know that God cherishes anyone or anything that exhibits humility. We therefore make the blessing, lihis ate b'tzitzit, on the fringes and not b'talit, again, because of the humility that is exhibited by the tzitzit. In fact, there's even, they say that derach eretz, 
is Kadna the Torah, that being following proper conduct precedes Torah. And Derech Eretz, if you translate it uh, uh, literally, means Derech, the way of the earth. And we also learn about humility from that. We tread on the earth, we walk on the earth, the earth doesn't complain, it accepts it. And again, that's why we learn humility, even from earth. The Balaturim states that the eight threads on each corner of the garment alludes to the eight organs of the body with which a person sins. Their eyes, their ears, their mouth, their nose, their hands, their feet, their heart, and sexual organ. Rashi says that the eight threads correspond to the eight days that the children of Israel traveled from the time they left Egypt until they sang the Az Yashir, the song of praise at the sea, again, when they came out of the sea and became a true nation, or the birth of the Jewish nation. The Alshuk states that the number of letters in this portion that command us to place seat seat on the four corners of our garment is 612. If we add the mitzvah itself, putting seat seat, wearing them, again, we have 613, corresponding to the 613 commandments that we are commanded to keep. The word talit has in a gematria numerical value of 17. Can't be. The, just like the word tov, good. I don't know how that comes. 17 is also the, the talit has, again, just like the word tov has a gematria of 17. Also the word chet, sin. This is an illusion that the mitzvah tzitzit is good that it helped protect us against sin. We continue with the words al kanfe big dehem on the corners of their garments. The portion also uses the word uzachar tem, and you'll remember that in whatever direction you turn, you remember the commandments again because the tzitzits are on all four corners of the garment. The dodo tam through the generations. This is mentioned before that the chelet, the blue thread. The Archaim HaKadosh says that that is to inform us that the white threads apply always, even without the blue one. Rav Nachman of Breslov says that wearing tzitzit, can be, we, for through that we can become a dor tam, a perfect generation, again from the word dor tam. The not new, and that you shall put them is the next word. Now, but not new is what we call a palindrome. Palindrome is a word that begins and ends the same way, backwards and forwards, to tell us that any effort, any effort that we expend on a mitzvah to serve God and keep his commandments will be rewarded in kind. Again, based on a base Mordechai. Continues with the word, al tzitzit takanot basil techelet, with the fringe of every corner a blue thread, Rashi states, Techelet, blue, is a blue dye that comes from a mullach that's called the Chalazon. Now the Orchim states that white symbolizes mercy and goodness, and the blue, God's dominion over the celestial realm, since the color blue is like the color of the sky. The Rebbe says that the blue threads of the tzitzit allude to sur turning away from evil, a negative, serving God out of fear. And the white threads allude to the concept of ase tov, do good, a positive, serving God out of love. Now today we no longer have the blue threads, which leaves us with eight white threads. This tells us that now our efforts should be directed towards love and towards positive attitudes. The concept of ahavas chinam, baseless love, we know that the second temple was destroyed because of a concept called sinaschinam, baseless hatred. So again, for us to bring the Messiah, we need to counteract it with avatchinam, baseless love. Now, I'm sure you've seen that there are some people who have tzitzit today with blue threads on them. Again, it has, there are debates among the commentaries today, among the sages, as to whether they are valid or not. There are those who say they are, and there are others who don't. Again, it becomes a area of contention. But for the mainstream, people still wear only eight white, even though, as I said, you will see people with the blue strand.
Now, according to the Magan Avram, there is a custom that between the five knots on each corner, we have four sections of wines. The first section has seven wines, the second section eight, the third, 11 wines, and the fourth, 13. Altogether, 7, 8, 11, and 13 equal 39, which is the gematria of the word Hashem Echod, God is one. Rav Nachman of Breslov says that the 32, 39 wines allude to, allude to the word Tau, do. Again, a constant source of blessing. There is a, the Gra asks, why is the section of Tzitzit next to the Shabbat? And he says that the Talmud in Shabbat 87b states, Avot Melochot Arbaim Choser Achat. That there are 49 major works on the Shabbat, minus one, which 40 minus one, 39. The wines again on the Tzitzit, 7, 8, 11, and 13. 39, and these correspond to the division of prohibited works on the Shabbat. It's interesting that in Ivrit, in Hebrew, there are two words that mean work. One is a malacha, and the other is avodah. They both are translated as work. But the difference is on the Shabbat, it's malachot, malachas that are forbidden, not avodot. A malacha, a avoda, is something that an evid, that a servant would do for a master. A malacha is something that is creative. So God stopped creating on the seventh day. It's not that he was tired. It's just he stopped the creation. And therefore, we do not do any creative acts. Yet, you can do an act that's an avoda, that which a servant would do for a master. So, how are they broken up? So the Gras says 13 prohibitions at works are connected to planting just like the 13 wines. 11, again, the wines are connected to weaving. Eight works are connected to carpentry. And seven are connected to other assorted works. So we see a connection between tzitzit and the Shabbat. Rashi also states that the reason the section of the Mekoshesh Eitzim, the gatherer of the wood, is next to the section of idolatry, is to teach us that he who profanes the Shabbat is as one who pro worships idols, since Shabbat is equal to all the other commandments in the Torah. Rashi continues and states that the section of tzitzit is next to the section of Shabbat for the exact same reason, because it too is equal to all the commandments in the Torah. As the Torah says, Ba'asisem tzitem es kol mitzvotai, and you shall do all of my commandments. Now the word techelet, Blue is spelled the same as the word tachlit, which means ultimate purpose. One who performs the mitzvah of tzitzit is equal to one who has achieved their ultimate purpose. The blue thread, more than anything, helps to remind us of our mission to be both physical and spiritual beings, not abstract intellects such as angels, nor merely earthbound creatures like animals. And just like blue is the color, halfway between the all-absorbing black and the all-reflecting white, so too the Torah is an intermediary between us and God Almighty. Our sages say that the sea, the sky, and the Kisei HaKovod, God's throne of glory, all three represent the progression and act as catalyst to bring about the fusing of the material and spiritual world. The Talmud in Menachot 43b states that blue is like the color of the sea, the sea is like the color of the sky, and the sky reminds us of the Kisei HaKavod, the throne of God's, God's throne of glory. For Moshe Feinstein says, if the sea and the sky are all really a reflection of the throne of glory, so why not just state the color of the throne directly? Why bother with the sea and the sky? The message is simple. In order to elevate oneself spiritually and succeed in reaching the highest levels, one must proceed step by step. One cannot go immediately to the throne. It takes much struggle and effort. One must climb slowly but surely, making sure that one's achieve, one, one has achievements one at a time. And only that which a person achieves through time and great effort 
becomes truly his own and a part of his being, based on the Tali Orut. The fact that there is only one blue thread in our tzitzit among the eight emphasizes the fact that there is only one proper way among the many choices man appears to have. Tzitzit are a form of insurance against seduction by our Yetzahara, by our evil inclination. There are five knots on each corner. and Four times five is twenty, the gematria, the numerical value of the letter Chaf, which alludes to the word Keser, which is crown. The tzitzit are a garment of royalty, royal blue. The Shalah Kaddish states that the 32 strings of the tzitzit allude to Chokmah Ilah, supernal wisdom, which is the beginning of Chokmah Tata, the lower wisdom, which is the domain of the Knesset Yisrael, the sum total of the nation of Israel. 32, this is the numerical value of the word Lev, heart, an allusion to the relationship which we should have with God, our Father, serving Him and fulfilling His commandments with love. 32 is also connected with the written Torah, which begins with a Lamed, pardon me, with an Aleph, pardon me, with a Bez, and ends with a Lamed. Again, 32. I think with that we're going to stop here, and um, next week we'll continue with the second half of the Indian with the topic dealing with, again, the Tzitzit. Again, and with that, may we help to bring in the coming Mashiach Zekenu quickly in our time. Thank you so much for coming. Shabbat Shalom. By the way,